on something that is really a major cause with major effect on over half of the population of this country who are women, after all. It's, it's distressing not to get a straight answer. So let me try again. Do you agree with Justice Scalia's view that Roe was wrongly decided? <clears throat> Senator, I completely understand why you are asking the question. But again, I can't pre-commit or say, yes, I'm going in with some agenda, because I'm not. I don't have any agenda. I have no agenda to try to overrule Casey. Um, I have an agenda to stick to the rule of law and decide cases as they come. Well, what I'm, as a person, uh, I don't know if you'll answer this one either. Do you agree with Justice Scalia's view that Roe can and should be overturned by the Supreme Court? Well, I think my answer is the same because, you know, that's a case that's litigated. It could, you know, its contours could come up again. In fact, do come up. You know, they, they came up last term before the court. So I think, you know, what the Casey standard is and um, that's just it's a contentious issue, which is, I know, one reason why it would be comforting to you to have an answer. But I can't express views on cases or pre-commit um, to approaching a case any particular way. Well, that makes it difficult for me, and I think for other women also on this committee, because this is a very important case, and it affects a lot of people, millions and millions of women, and you could be a very important vote. This is Trump's newest Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett, dodging the question while being asked if she agrees with the late Justice Antonin Scalia's assessment that Roe v. Wade, the landmark Supreme Court decision ruling that the Constitution protects a woman's right to choose to have an abortion, was wrongly decided. And bear in mind here, her deflections aside, it was Amy Coney Barrett herself who said that Antonin Scalia's philosophy was hers. I clerked for Justice Scalia more than 20 years ago, but the lessons I learned still resonate. His judicial philosophy is mine, too. And that's a point that she reiterated in this very confirmation hearing. Justice Scalia, he was an originalist, right? Yes, he was. People say that you're a female Scalia. What would you say? I would say that Justice Scalia was obviously a mentor. And as I said um, in the, when I accepted the president's nomination, that his philosophy is mine, too. Meaning that the subtext is obvious. She views herself in the mold of her mentor, a mentor who quite literally said that Roe v. Wade was wrongly decided. It doesn't exactly leave much to the imagination here. And beyond that, as if those hints weren't obvious enough, consider what Amy Coney Barrett herself signaled on the topic of Roe. In 2006, she signed a letter that included a call for the end of Roe v. Wade. It read, quote, the Supreme Court's 1973 Roe v. Wade decision legalized abortion for any reason. It's time to put an end to the barbaric legacy of Roe v. Wade and restore laws that protect the lives of unborn children. In other words, while now that she's in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, she's pretending that she couldn't possibly speak on such an issue and how that would be such an affront to the very notion of judicial independence, when she wasn't going on a charm offensive in front of the entire nation, referring to Roe as barbaric is what Amy Coney Barrett actually thinks about the Supreme Court decision. Consider too what Donald Trump himself said about nominating justices during his debate with Hillary Clinton in 2016. Do you want to see the court overturn? You just said you want to see the court protect the Second Amendment. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe v. Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. Meaning that the very nomination of Amy Coney Barrett by Donald Trump inherently suggests that she's hostile to Roe because Trump wouldn't even nominate someone who wasn't. Because per usual, he gave the entire ballgame away. And now the entire right is playing coy and pretending that they couldn't possibly know how she would rule on this issue. It is political theater and nothing more. And it's not just Trump. Consider too Republican Senator Josh Hawley's explicit litmus test for confirming a Supreme Court nomination. He said, quote, I will vote only for those Supreme Court nominees who have explicitly acknowledged that Roe v. Wade is wrongly decided. By explicitly acknowledged, I mean on the record and before they were nominated. He then added, I don't want private assurances from candidates. I don't want to hear about their personal views one way or another. I'm not looking for forecasts about how they may vote in the future or predications. I don't want any of that. I want to see on 
the record as part of the record that they have acknowledged in some forum that Roe v. Wade as a legal matter is wrongly decided. Pretty clear, huh? And yet when it comes to Amy Coney Barrett, Hawley said, quote, there's plenty of evidence, I think, to demonstrate she understands that Roe is, in my words, an act of judicial imperialism, and I feel very comfortable with her on the issue. And if the guy whose sole litmus test is hostility to Roe is perfectly okay with her, then that should tell you everything you need to know. The fact is that while conservatives decry judicial activism from the left, it's Republicans who do exactly that, who impose their own beliefs onto the rest of this country from legislators right on up to nominees for the highest court in the land. They're not concerned with precedent or the will of the American people. They're only concerned with imposing their own personal agenda upon the rest of America. And so despite the fact that Roe v. Wade is precedent, despite the fact that it's law, despite the fact that an overwhelming 70% of Americans support it, a minority of Republicans will do whatever they can to overturn it. And in case there is any doubt, the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett is an integral part in that process. So they'll do this whole song and dance where she pretends that she can't comment on a case until it's before her, but her views are well known and her nomination by Donald Trump and support from senators like Josh Hawley are all the proof you need that she'll be a rubber stamp for Republicans looking to legislate women's reproductive rights away from the bench. So don't fall for these antics because their intent is crystal clear. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.